Hey guys, Eric here from worshipbanduniversity.com and today we are going to start our new video series which is going to show us how to create cues, clicks, and even backing tracks using Ableton Live. So the first thing we need to do is open up Ableton and what we're going to do is we're going to clear up our workspace over here. Now this is the default uh, template that you have so what we're going to do is we're going to click and we're going to delete both MIDI tracks, one audio track, reverb, and your delay. After that's done, we're going to go over here to the right and we're going to switch from our session view up here to our arrangement view. And when I click on it, you can see we get more of a horizontal thing than our vertical tracks that we usually do. I can also hit the tab key on my keyboard to switch back and forth too in case you're flipping back and forth quickly. Now once we do that, we're going to drag in the song that we want to make a cue, click, or a backing track with. So I'm going to go down to iTunes and I'm going to drag in the song I want to do. So I'm going to drag in the song More by uh, Liquid Music, which is the church that I come from. And we're going to use one of these songs here. Now what I'm going to do is, first is I'm going to go up to the top left over here, and I'm going to uh, click and make the, MP, uh, make the BPM of the song 140, because that's what it is in the song. And I'm also going to turn the click track on right over here. Now, when I uh, hit play, so I'm going to hit the space bar, you're going to hear that uh, the BPM is going at 140, but the problem is, is it's not lining up with the actual track. And that's a big problem when we're trying to create cues and other stuff too. So what we need to do is tell Ableton to start that on the exact moment that the first downbeat of the song happens. So what we're going to do is we're going to double click on the title bar of the song right here. And down the bottom opens up uh, this window down here which we have some of the wavelengths for the song and we have a whole bunch of other options over here too. We're going to go over and we're going to click warp to the song. And you can see that dropped on this little menu over here which is great. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go up here to this bar up here and you can see that it changed from an arrow or whatever else into a little magnifying glass in hand. I'm going to click and I'm going to drag down because that's going to zoom in to the song so I can basically see a little bit better where this song is going to start. Now Ableton's really smart so what they actually do over here if you look see these little gray lines over here those are the downbeats for the song. Now it's not always 100% accurate but uh, a good amount of the time it usually is especially at the beginning on the first one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click over on this one and then I'm going to right click and it's going to open up this window here and I'm going to put set 111 here. By doing that, what it just is, now you can see that this is lined up with that first downbeat of the song. So Ableton now knows to fire the cues and everything else right on that time at 140. So let's see what it sounds like. So now that our track is lined up with our metronome, we can do pretty much anything. Again, making background tracks, making cues, or even making our own metronome to go along with it. So do this for a few of the songs. Uh, again, some songs are going to be harder than others. Um, basically find out the BPM of the song, the time signature, and just do the best you can. It may take a couple tries to really get this down. Um, and again, like I said, some songs are going to be a lot harder than other ones to do. Um, but again, give it a shot. Do it a couple times. If you guys have any questions, you can contact us. And if not, we will see you guys in the next video.